today we're going to read verses 13 to 29 of Discourse 5th of the Bhagavad Gita. And this is in a discourse of the Bhagavad Gita called The Renunciation of Action, Slok 13. Sarva Karmani Manasa Sanya Syaste Sukha Vasi Navadware Pure Dehi Neva Kuvarna Karayana Slok 13. The embodied one gives up all actions with the mind, neither performing nor causing action, as a lord sits contentedly in the city of nine gates. The prose reads, mentally renouncing all actions, the self-controlled soul enjoys bliss in this body, the city of the nine gates, neither doing anything himself nor causing anything to be done. And the note reads, the nine gates are the nine openings of the body, two eyes, two ears, two nostrils, mouth, genitals, and anus. And the Sharma reads, after having renounced all actions mentally, a self-controlled person rests comfortably in the city of nine gates, neither truly doing nor causing anything to be done. And there's a footnote, neither truly doing nor causing anything to be done means that one is not driven by compulsive longing. The city of nine gates is symbolic of the body. Two eyes, two ears, two nostrils, mouth, anus, and genitals. Like a wise king in a city with well-guarded gates, he works, but is not identified with nor controlled by his body and mind. Slope 14. Na kartutvaha na karmani lokasya sujati prabhu na karma fal sayoga svabha vastu pravastate. Look 14. This master creates neither agent nor action in this world, nor the linking of action with its fruit but his own nature keeps on evolving. Rose reads. The Lord of the universe has not ordained activity or any incentive thereto, or any relation between an act and its consequences. All this is the work of nature. The Sharma reads. The Lord does not create a sense of doership nor actions, not even connection to the results of actions of people in the world. Instead, one's own nature is the motivating force. Slope 15. Nadate kasya chittatapaha na cheva shukurtaha vibhuhu Agyanena vruttaha jnana tena mruhunti janatvaha. The one who pervades all does not take in the good or harm done by anyone. Wisdom is covered up by ignorance, which confuses living beings. Prose reads, the Lord does not accept responsibility for any man's sin or merit. Men are deluded because in them wisdom is submerged in ignorance. The Sharma reads, the all-pervading God neither takes on the sin nor the virtue of anyone. Knowledge is covered by ignorance. Beings are deluded by this. Slok 16. Gnanena tu 
प्रकाशयति But among those whose ignorance of the self is destroyed by wisdom, their wisdom illuminates the highest like the sun. The prose reads, Surely wisdom is like the sun, revealing the supreme joy, the supreme truth to those whose ignorance is dispelled by the wisdom of the self. And the footnote reads, wisdom, vidya, intuitive knowledge of the self as one with ultimate reality, a synonym of janana and prajna. Its opposite is avidya, often translated as nescience, meaning non-knowledge, ignorance of the true nature of the self. The Sharma reads, on the other hand, for those in whom that ignorance of the self is destroyed by knowledge, their knowledge, like the sun, illumines the supreme reality. Okay, I think I understand that. In other words, the more knowledge you get, the better off you are, I guess. Slok 17. No, you're... Uh, I'm wrong. I, 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 I don't think you're fully accurate. Okay, let me read it again. This, the, we were on 16, right? On the other hand, for those in whom that ignorance of the self is destroyed by knowledge, So people who are ignorant of the self, that ignorance is destroyed by knowledge, like the sun illumines the supreme reality. All right, so the more knowledge you get, the closer to wisdom you get, basically. Or maybe eliminating the ego, not, not closer to wisdom. Okay, eliminating the ego. Yeah. It's not a trophy, right? Like what what you are saying sounds like some trophy we got, but it's 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 the same thing. Or maybe it's a feeling that everybody got that trophy. Let me read the verse again in in <laughs> in poetry. It says This is verse 16. But among those whose ignorance of the self is destroyed by wisdom, their wisdom illuminates the highest like the sun. Okay, so in other words, if, if you have wisdom and thereby you destroy ignorance, okay, then that wisdom illuminates the highest like the sun. Mm. Right. Mm. But I think you get wisdom. You don't have wisdom. Maybe I look. I'll say it that way. I, I look at it that way. It's a. It's a play of the words only. But I think we. Yeah, I, I mean, this verse doesn't have to do with how you got wisdom, though. It simply says, for those who have wisdom, or who's but among those whose ignorance of the self is destroyed by wisdom, so they must already have wisdom, right? Illuminates the highest like the sun. Hmm. And we have to study it more too. Okay, we can come back to it. <laughs> we get, we can read it and, and then come back to it because we have... are... <laughs> no, no 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 I think I think if you go go back to the loop you'll understand 
if you are going to give your conclusion then i will also have to give my conclusion and we are going to so, so let's not do that let's not give our commentary okay at least at least about the slokes because that's the play of it right that is why it is like most translated book of right. india yeah because uh, yeah. nobody is satisfied with it like right okay nobody is satisfied <laughs> with the translation i understand yeah. okay i've got it okay slok 17 tada buddha ya tadatma nast nishtha st ुदर बर्थ in the prose verse 17 meditating on the divine having faith in the divine concentrating in on the divine and losing themselves in the divine their sins dissolved in wisdom they go whence there is no return and the sharma reads with their intellect focused on that supreme at one with that having that as their basis having that as their supreme goal they attain freedom from rebirth with sins shaken off by knowledge slok 18 विद्या विनय संपन्ने ब्राह्मणे कवि हस्तितिनी सुनी चैव स्वपाके च पणितताः समदर्शिनः लोकेति the pandits see the same in a brahman gifted with knowledge and training as in a cow or in an elephant as in a dog or in a dog cooker verse 18 sages look equally upon all whether it be a minister of learning and humility or an infidel or whether it be a cow an elephant or a dog <clears throat> there's a footnote infidel svak paka dog cooker the lowest class of outcast slok 18 learned ones look equally upon a brahman upon a brahmana endowed with knowledge and good conduct a cow an elephant and even a dog and one who eats the meat of a dog slok 19 ihev tejitah sargo yesha samye sitta manah nirdoshah hi सम ब्रह्म तस्माद ब्रह्मी ते सिताह लोक 19 rebirth is conquered here in this world by those whose minds abide in that sameness brahman has no fault and so they abide in brahman verse 19 even in the world they conquer their earth life whose minds fixed on the supreme remain always balanced 
for the Supreme has neither blemish nor bias. And the Sharma reads, here in this very world, the worldly cycle is overcome by those whose mind is established in sameness. Since that flawless Brahman is the same in all, therefore, they are established in Brahman. Slope 20, or I'm sorry, uh, there's a footnote. That is, they are one with Brahman. Also see verse 633. Okay, slope 20. No. Prahaste Tisprayaha Pra Yaha No Ti J Ta Prayat Cha Priyama Sthir Buddhi Rasmutho Brahma Vidya Brahmani Titihi Slope 20 When one finds something loved, one shouldn't be excited. When one finds something unloved, one shouldn't tremble. With insight firm, without confusion, knowing Brahman, one abides in Brahman. The prose reads, he who knows and lives in the absolute remains unmoved and unperturbed. He is not elated by pleasure or depressed by pain. The Sharma reads, a person with discriminating intellect, undiluted, a knower of Brahman, established in Brahman, should not feel exhilarated on attaining what is favorable, nor feel dissatisfied on attaining what is unfavorable. Slope 21. Bahi Sparsheshwa Sat Katma Vinda Yatmani Yatu Sukhama Sa Brahm Yoga Yuktama Sukhama Shaya Masnute. So twenty one. The one who does not cling to sensations from the outside, who finds joy in the self, and who joins with Brahman through yoga, reaches endless joy. The prose reads, he finds happiness in his own self and enjoys eternal bliss, whose heart does not yearn for the contacts of earth and whose self is one with the everlasting. The Sharma reads, the person having no attachment to external objects of the senses attains happiness in the self. That person, in communion with Brahman, finds imperishable happiness. The footnote reads, the happiness attained by a detached person is the real imperishable happiness. Verse 22, slope 22. ये ही संस्पर्शजा भोगा दुखयो नय एव ते अधंत बंतह कौन तेय न शेशु रमते बुधह स्लोक 22 Son of Kunti, pleasures born of sensations are like wombs filled with pain. They have a beginning and an end, so the wise one does not rejoice in them. The prose reads, the joys that spring from eternal so the joys that the joys that spring from external associations from pain bring pain. They have their beginnings and their endings. The wise man does not rejoice in them.
verse 22, indeed pleasures that arise from contact with the objects of senses have a beginning and an end, are only the origins of misery, O son of Kunti. The wise person does not delight in them. Slug 23. Kano Siheva Yaha Sodhu Prakshadi Ra Vimokshanata Kama Krodha Bhava Venga Sha Yuktakaha Sa Sukhi Naraha Slok 23 One who can endure in this world the shock that begins in desire and anger before release from the body is joined to yoga and a happy person. The prose reads, he who before he leaves his body learns to surmount the promptings of desire and anger is a saint and is happy. The Sharma reads, one who can withstand an urge arising from passion and anger in this very world prior to release from the body is a disciplined and happy person. There's a footnote. Passion refers to any type of longing. One may have a passion for learning, for example. This verse refers to an urge of passion or anger that, if acted upon, could be hurtful to others. Normal, moderate urges should not cause harmful effects. Slope 24. Yodantaha Sukhodatara Rama Sa Thansa Chyoti Veva Yaha Sa Yogi Dhanna Brahma Nirbanaha Brahma Bhuto de Dhigar Chachati. Sok 24. The one who practices yoga, who has joy within, delight within, and then radiance within, thus reaches sensation in Brahman, of one being with Brahman. Rose reads, he who is happy within his self and has found its peace and in whom the inner light shines, that sage attains eternal bliss and becomes the spirit itself. The Sharma reads, one who has inner happiness, inner joy, and inner light, truly that yogin, having identified with Brahman, attains liberation in Brahman. Slok 25. Labhante Brahma Nirvana Mrushaha Shrena Kalma Shaha Chinna Dredha Yat Yatat Manaha Sarva Bhuta Hite Rataha. The sages reach cessation in Brahman. Their evils destroyed, their dualities cut, their selves restrained. They rejoice in the friendship of all beings. Sages whose sins have been washed away, whose sense of separateness has vanished, who have subdued themselves and seek only the welfare of all, come to the eternal spirit. And there's a footnote. To seek only, To seek only the welfare of all is, in Professor Edgerton's words, perhaps the highest formulation 
of practical ethics that any religion has obtained. A similar ideal is expressed in um, 320, 325, and 12.4. Work for the welfare of others is spiritually valuable only if it is selfless service, inspired by love for God. If you render service in order to oblige a person, and if you feel proud of doing it, you are not only doing spiritual harm to the recipient of your service, but also to yourself. If, while serving, you take delight in it and develop pride in doing a good thing, you are getting attached to your act and thereby binding yourself. That's from Meyer Baba. And I had missed a footnote in the previous verse, which was that um, Brahma Nirvana, the Nirvana of Bra Brahman is eternal bliss. Okay, so. Sharma. The Sharma reads, self-disciplined sages with sins dwindled away, inner dualistic conflicts uprooted, engaged in the welfare of all beings, obtain liter liberation in Brahman. Slug 26. Kama Krodha Vyukta Na Yati Na Yata Cheta Sama Abhito Brahma Nirvana Vartate Vidita Tma Nama. Slope 26. Sensation in cessation in Brahman lies nearby for those ascetics who are restrained, who are not joined to anger and desire, who are restrained in thought and who know the self. Saints who know their selves, who control their minds and feel neither desire nor anger, find eternal bliss everywhere. The Sharma reads, free from passion and anger, with restrained and disciplined mind, those who know the self attain liberation in Brahman in every situation. Slope 27. 27 and 28 are together. Okay. Parsha Kutsava Bhai Bhama Shakya Shus Che Vansare Bruvoho Prana Panu Samo Krutva Nasa Bhyantara Charino <clears throat> Yatendri Yamano Buddhi Mu Nirmoksha Para Yanaha Vigatecha Bhaya Krodho Yaha Sada Mukta Eva Saha So twenty seven twenty eight making outside sensation truly outside, focusing the eye between the eyebrows, making equal the ignoring the ingoing breath and the outgoing breath, moving in the nose, the sage whose highest path is release, whose sense, mind, and insight are controlled, whose anger, fear, and longing have disappeared, is always released. Prose reads, excluding external objects, his gaze fixed between the eyebrows, the inward and outward breathings passing equally through his nostrils, governing sense, mind, and intellect, intent on liberation, free from desire, fear, and anger, the sage is forever free. 
on the footnotes read, between the eyebrows, when the eyes are half closed in meditation, the eyeballs remain motionless and their gaze converges toward a point between the brows, according to Nikolanda. That point is the Ajna chakra, often called the third eye, the center of inner vision and intuitive knowledge. When the internal eye is opened, God, who is the object of search and longing, is actually cited from Meyer Baba and a separate footnote. Inward and outward breathings, a reference to pranayama. Are you sure. making notes for pranayama? No, no, I, I was just getting the other book. <laughs> so now I'm, okay. with, I'm with the Sharma. Okay. okay, okay. So uh, verses 27 and 28 in the Sharma book, R.K. Sharma's book. Having put away all external contacts and fixing the gaze between the two eyebrows, having brought into balance the exhaling and inhaling breaths, moving through the nostrils. The wise person with liberation as his highest goal, who has regulated the senses and motor organs, mind and intellect, and who is free from desire, fear and anger, truly is ever liberated. And there's a footnote. Prana, Elan Vital, and Apana, the eliminative wind, are two types of vital energy in the body. They are also mentioned in verses 429 and 1514. Verse Verse 29. The sage that attains peace, who knows me as the enjoyer of the heated disciplines of sacrifice, is as great lord of the whole world, as one whose heart is with all beings. The prose reads, Knowing me as him who gladly receives all offerings of austerity and sacrifice, as the mighty ruler of all the worlds and the friend of all beings, he passes to eternal peace. And there's a footnote. Eternal peace, shanti, here meaning Brahman nirvana, Brahman nirvana. This does not necessarily imply the death of the physical body as passing into eternal peace might suggest in the English. Ramanuja says that the person who knows the Lord as a friend attains peace, meaning that he or she wins happiness even while performing karma yoga. The practice of karma yoga is undertaken gladly because all beings endeavor to please a friend. Sharma reads, one who realizes me as the supreme enjoyer of sacrifices and austerities 
as the supreme lord of all the worlds and the supreme friend of all beings, that person attains peace. And the Kalafan reads, here ends the fifth chapter named the Yoga of Renunciation. Comparative Evaluation of Renunciation and Detached Action in the Upanishads sung by Lord Sri Krishna in the dialogue between Sri Krishna and Arjuna in the scripture of yoga pertaining to knowledge about Brahman. And that completes Discourse 5. So uh, tomorrow we will be going on with Discourse 6, which is Meditation and Self-Control, Dhyana Yoga is what this course six is about. Okay, so are you still awake? Yes, of course. <laughs> okay, so, so tomorrow we will um it's fifteen, yes. From one to fifteen we will uh slope one to fifteen we will read. Okay. And um, I want to read a paragraph. Okay. About it. What stops us from emphasizing and exchanging? What makes us want to control the other or simply withdraw? Find peace in the isolation of the cave. The process of discovering the source of disconnection is called yoga. Through the word yoga itself means to connect. It involves moving through the many containers that constitute Deha in order to discover Dehi. Krishna starts speaking of yoga in chapter 5 of Gita, elaborating it further in chapter 6. Yoga is what we will explore in this chapter. With this, we move from the outer social world to the inner psychological world, from karma yoga to bhakti yoga. Yes. Okay. So that's for tomorrow. Good. So you're going to read about the eyes. <laughs> about the eyes. Okay. Within infinite myth lies an eternal truth. Who sees it all? Varuna has but a thousand eyes. Indra, a hundred. You and I, only two. And the American dollar has only one. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and, and it relates entirely to the outer world and doesn't relate to the inner world. It's all about materialism. And so we have to know that the... We are, it, it means that in, within this line, we are traveling forward. Finally, we are moving up of the one eye level. Yes. <laughs> so so there, there, therefore, we're going inward from tomorrow. We won't talk about the cyclops of the American dollar, the one eye dollar. <laughs> oh my God, I'm into that. <laughs> I'm into that, okay. Peace. Peace, see you later. Peace. <laughs> Bye-bye.